Glory to God. Welcome this morning. I'm just going to, as I uh, go over, I'm going to go over something wrong with this light. Hallelujah. Let me try this one. Hallelujah. There we go. That one's nice and loud. <laughs> Not that I really need it any louder than I got pretty strong voice. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just uh, we had such a wonderful time at the Come Away um, this past weekend. Those of you that uh, have joined us, I'm just going to give a, some a recaps of a couple things. We did talk a little bit about it yesterday, but the Holy Spirit had us go in the direction uh, yesterday because we had Sister Yolanda here who was at the Come Away and, and ministered on her, the miracle story that she had. And so... But I wanted to just, uh, we're going to talk for a few minutes over the th theme this year was Lily Among Thorns. And it was so profound to see how God ministered to each of us about the lilies. And um, the Lord has just been so, he's so uh, just been depositing as we focus on the glory. And one of the things that the Lord led me as we were ministering this year was a, about the blood of Jesus. And when I was young, I didn't know, nobody at the church that I went to ever talked about the blood of Jesus. And, and um, yet, it is a powerful force, and it is ever living. It actually, in, in Revelation, it is it emanating for you and I from the throne of God, all, day and night. It never ceases. It comes from, through, uh, from the Father, through Jesus, to us here in the earth. As we place a demand on the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and and this blood is so powerful, and it is, and in this blood is contained the glory, your glory like none other. There was the glory of the only begotten of the Father, and this glory we can tap into, and so there's a correlation between revivals and the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in John that there are three witnesses and. In heaven, and there's three witnesses in the earth, and one of the witnesses in the earth is the blood, because everybody has blood, even uh, animals, and you know, the animals have blood and micro. Or there's a, a blood stream in every all of creation, and so the blood is evident, and it's a it's a witness, and it is what cleanses us. In fact, the blood itself does a work of cleansing your system. And so there's a picture in the earth of the blood that cleanses the, the body, but then there's also the, the water that cleanses the outworking, you know, the outside. We can be cleansed and the body is cleansed by water. And then there's also the spirit that also cleanses us. The Holy Spirit cleanses us and, and he purges us. And he can renew you, that anointing can renew you in a moment. You, you don't even really, it's not, it's coming as you place a demand upon on Jesus, that anointing will come and actually heal you and change you and rearrange you. And so this morning I felt the Lord wanted me just to talk about a couple things here in, uh, from what we talked about at the, at the uh, come away again about the blood of Jesus and that you uh, like I said I did not when I was young I did not nobody taught on the blood nobody nobody ever really focused on the finished work of Jesus so another aspect of what we talked about this weekend was the crown and as you know Jesus had a crown of thorns that was put on his head and that crown of thorns was, like they said, was jammed on his head. And I believe when that blood flowed, it's a picture of that blood flowing down and cleansing your mind. Isn't that wonderful? That, that, that there are things that the blood of Jesus, who is above, Jesus is above time, can go in and cleanse your conscience. The Bible says in Hebrews, from dead works, so that you can serve him. Because if you're always having a memory of that sin and what you were involved in, then and it hasn't really been erased because it has, he, you should, when that blood has really purged you, you shouldn't even remember. I mean, like I said, people wanted to tell me who I was, remind me who I was. I, 
uh, uh, when I went back to Vera Beach, he wanted me, my friends wanted to remember when you did this, this, you know, I said, no, I don't. I said, I'm a new creation. I don't remember those things. And those weren't the best of my times. Even though they, we thought we were having fun, they have nothing to compare to what my life in Jesus and the supernatural things that he's done in my life. I tell you, he, yeah, when you follow him, he sets you up for supernatural encounters. And so, um, and so when I began to, uh, uh, to get a hold of the revelation of the blood, he, he just was leading me, and I've had supernatural deliverances every time through the blood. I, I, I have called on the name of Jesus, the outworking of, of the finished work of Jesus. And so I encourage you that you spend some time on what Jesus, every part of where the blood flowed is important. He, he flowed, it flowed, he, he sweated drops of blood, so his whole body sweated. There was such pressure on him that it, he sweated drops of blood. And then the crown that was on his head over the mind, hallelujah, it cleanses your mind. And, and as I was praying for one of my sisters, with one of my sisters, I realized as he was talking about this, these thorns that, that were pierced in that blood that went over that mind, that we can appropriate the blood over our mind. Amen. And uh, one of my sisters that was, I was talking with, she said, she said that, that was, that's what I needed to stand on over the fulfillment of a promise that he's, God's given me. So we're going to, God is faithful with you. As you go in faith to believe for the impossible, he will give you a word. He will, then he will give you a, I want you to do this. Amen. And so God is going to give you, he wants to give you the instructions. And one of the things that the Lord um, spoke to us this past weekend is, is that his, uh, when we focus on the Lord, when we behold him, we're changed from glory to glory. Not when we behold this situation, when we behold him, when we choose to put the distractions away and focus on Jesus. We have to determine to take our thoughts and put them in a direction. And you are the, the person that is going to do that. I can't do it for you. You have to determine to set your affections on above and not beneath. That's what the Bible says, I believe, is in Colossians. Set your affections on above, on the, on the things of heaven. And so you've got to set your affections. And so sometimes in our lives, our, our attention and our focus, like the Bible says in Mark 4, and we'll go over to Mark 4, um, he describes the thorns that choke out the word and make the, it unfruitful. And so you've got to determine, are there anxiety, the cares, the Bible says, and the worries can choke, come in and choke out the word of God being profitable. So we can read the word, but if we just, we give the attention to the world and all these things going on, we give that more attention than what we're giving the word. That's going to take ascendancy over that word. We've got to, the word is incorruptible, yes, but you will got to put that, your attention on it and be, make a decision that I'm going to zoom in to what he says. The Bible says that in, in Psalm 23, he says, uh, it says, Psalm 23 says, I, he set a table before me in the presence of my enemy. There is a table that you go to. Uh, it's, I believe that he was speaking about, that was David speaking about Jesus being the table that was going to provide. He was speaking while Jesus was still in his loins in the future, he was already talking about, you've set a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Amen? And, 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 and he's called each of us. There, there, there are thorns around you. There are, there are situations that want to take you, your attention away 
from what God has for you. He has for you to come and sit at the table with him. Jesus himself has made a place for you at the table. Amen? Hallelujah. We don't have these. We are going to be with him in this marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? He's got a place set for you and I. Not everybody that is called, they could be called to the marriage supper. They're not everybody's going to be able to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's those that have received, accepted Jesus. Amen? He's our beloved. He's our beloved. He's your beloved. It's me. He's, he's everybody's beloved. Amen. And he's called us to come away with him and to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And let's go. Let me just read that back here in Mark 4. And make sure you know I'm not mad. making this up. <laughs> and Matt, let me get over to Mark 4. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It says here in Mark 4, it says, thank you, Jesus. And let's just begin with 13. Uh, and he said, this is in red, Know you not this parable, this, this speaking about the parable of the sower. Let me get back up here. It says, we'll start with three. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And then the other fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, Hear, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And so when he was alone, his disciples were around him, and they said to him, he, and he, they wanted to know about the parable. And he said to them, Unto you it's given to know this mystery of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, all these things are just done in parables. That seeing they may see and perceive. And hearing they may hear but not understand. Lest at any time they would be converted and their sins be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know not this parable? How then will you know all the parables? The sower goes out to sow the word. And these that are by the wayside, where the word is sown, word is sown, but when they have heard it, Satan immediately comes to take away the word that is sown in their heart. Distractions right away. They, when that word comes, the devil wants to come right immediately. He doesn't want it to get in your heart. He doesn't want you to get it in and meditate on it. He wants to immediately come against it. And then there are likewise they that are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, they immediately receive it, and they like this. Oh, yes, that's a great word. That's a great word. But they don't have any root. They don't meditate on it. And so they endure for a time, but afterwards, when something comes, an affliction, something comes at them, or persecution comes, and it's coming at them because of that word that they got, immediately they become offended, and they and they don't this and the word doesn't grow up. And they, then these are they are they that are sown among thorns which is what we were focusing on this past weekend. And these are the, they are these that have the cares of the world. They are sown among thorns. They hear the word, but there's cares, anxiety over the world and all the things that are going on. And the deceitfulness of riches, false glamour, and the lust of other things Enter in and choke this word 
and it becomes unfruitful. And then there are things that are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. The Lord is expecting a harvest of what he's sown in you. He's expecting you to be a good husband over, a husbandman over the harvest of the word that has been given you. Amen? Each of us can hear the word, and we have the capacity to let the devil steal it right away. We also can be around and, and allow the deceitfulness and the lust for other things, get in or the cares, and there's many things to be concerned about, but you have to make yourself focus on this word. Amen? You want to come, you want to say, Lord, I'm going to fellowship with you about around this word. He wants you and him and this word, the Holy Spirit, to fellowship around this word. A table, let's go over to Psalm 23. Amen. He says, I've said, he's your shepherd. He's a good shepherd. A good shepherd is, this is what a good shepherd does. He will leave the 99 and he'll go and get the one that's lost. A good shepherd, he will leave the, the sheep together and he will know that the food is getting that they're running out of food, and he will find the new place of good pasture for those sheep to go to so that they can be sustained. The sheep will just stay there and eat, 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 but the shepherd knows, hey, they're running out of a pasture here. I need to take them to a new place. A, the good shepherd, he's the one like David that he takes out when the predator comes. He takes out the lion. He takes out the bear that are trying to come in and devour the sheep. That's, that's our shepherd. Amen. He's so faithful. So the Lord, when David wrote this, he was caring for the sheep. He wasn't yet in a place or a position of leadership. He wasn't at that point. He was by himself. He was out with the sheep. And he had got a revelation. That the Lord himself was his shepherd. Amen. And he says, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He makes me to rest. And then he leads me. He makes me to rest to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And he himself restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yes, I walk through valleys of shadows of death but I determine I fear no evil because I know you are with me Lord Amen Your rod and your staff Lord it comforts me I remember one night I was walking home from a friend's house in the middle of the night and it was a short walk and I was just singing because I had a fear of the dark just had this just, just didn't and so I started singing I learned the this, this song about song, Psalm 23 song and uh, so I just started singing and this young man jumped out uh, of the bushes I don't know what his intent was, see. I was just singing the song because I was, you know, I was walking home and it was dark and there was just a lot of woods and stuff. 
And that young man had jumped out at me, you know. And I don't know what his intent was. But the Lord had me singing that song as a youth. You know, he start, I started singing, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? We just don't even know what God is protecting us from. Amen? And, I, and, and uh, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, and you have prepared a table that I can partake daily of before me in the very presence of my enemies, those thorns that are coming against you. You sit down at the table of the Lord. You take the covenant. There are times, that, like I've said, I've woken up. The Lord's woken me up. Go take the covenant meal. Get your husband to take the covenant meal. Amen? That's the table that he set for you and I. The finished work of Jesus Christ. He's prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he has anointed me with fresh oil. He's got a new and a fresh anointing for you today, for this hour. And guess what? It runs over. This anointing that he anoints you with, it's not just for you. It goes from the, it starts at the top. He anoints you and it flows to the bottom. Amen. And it goes to the people that you come in contact with. Hallelujah. It's a fresh anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. That it comes from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me. They follow you all the days of your life. But you know what? You can be running from the goodness and mercy that he's chasing you down to give you. Stop. Pause. Receive it. Receive the goodness and mercy. He says, I will, and I will dwell with you forever. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are you? I know. I dwell in the secret place. Brother, uh, Brother Mike God gave him a song, new song, amen? It came from dwelling in the secret place. It came from going into the realm with God, amen? He has a place away from everybody to come away to him, with him. You know, he's going to say, um, at the end, it says of Revelation, it says, uh, come. And he's calling us to come. And so, you know, even the come away is a preparation when he's going to say, come away, my bride. Hallelujah, will you come away? When he says, come away. If you're not able to come away with them now, are you going to be able to come away with them when he calls you away? When, uh, when he calls you away to him, himself? Or will you be like that maid? She said, I can't. In, the, in, in, in song, song that she, he knocks at the door and she says, I can't come. I've already washed myself. I can't come. And yet her bowels are moved by him. See, her bowels are moved when the Holy Spirit beckons she to come away. But she's saying, wait a minute, I'm already, I can't do it. I've got these other things. I've got things I need to do. I need to do for God. But the Holy Spirit's beckoning you. To come away with him. Come away with him. He's got places he thinks he wants to deposit in you. And it says she delayed. And then when she went, she said that it says in Song of Solomon that the, that the door, the handle of the door dripped with myrrh, dripped with his anointing. What he wants us to do. When he comes to give us a greater anointing for this hour. But it's not going to always be convenient. I had a dream years ago about, I was ministering, this is when, this is 
right after Pastor Kevin and I were married, we were living in another home, not where we lived, not here. And in, in the dream, I was ministering to people. I had this long gown on that fitted, fit perfect, and I felt like Jesus. And I was ministering to these people in this room. And all of a sudden, in the back of the door, Kevin Oak came in. And when he came in, <coughs> even though I was ministering, I ran <coughs> and I jumped in his arms. <coughs> and everybody in that setting observed me jumping. <coughs> and running into his arms. <coughs> That's a picture of Jesus. And then he took me and we went to play at the beach. You know, there's a rest <coughs> for you and Jesus. He has a place. Let me just read that passage that I'm talking to you about in Song of Solomon so you have it. So that you see I'm not making it up. Amen? You want to. This is the weekend that we were focusing on our beloved. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> In chapter 5, she says, I've come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I gather my myrrh with my spice. I've eaten my honeycomb with my honey. <coughs> and I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friend, drink you. Drink abundantly, O oh my beloved. I sleep, but my heart wakes. It's the voice of my beloved. He's prepared stuff to give you. Hallelujah. It's the voice of my beloved that's knocking, saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with drops of the night. But she says instead, he's prepared, he's come to get her. She says, but I put off my coat. How shall I put it on again? I've washed my feet. How shall I defile them again? My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with myrrh, and my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh upon the handles of the walk. He was covered with the anointing and the refreshing and everything for me. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spoke. I sought him, but I couldn't find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. We don't want to miss the call. We don't want to miss the beckoning. The watchmen that went about the city, they found me, they smote me, and they wounded me, and the keepers of the walls took away my veil. They have covered me. I charge you, O oh daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, tell them I'm sick of love. I need him. <laughs> and then it goes on, and I finish this. And they say, who is your beloved that you would so long him for him? Oh, you fairest among women, what is your beloved more than another beloved that you do charge us so? And she says, my beloved, he's swat. He's ruddy. He's the chiefest among 10,000. His head is of most fine gold, and his locks are bushy and black as ravens. 
His eyes are the eyes of doves and rivers of waters washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are beds of spices and sweet flowers. His lips are like the lilies, dropping sweet smelling myrrh. His hands are gold rings and set with the burl, and his belly is bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble and set on sockets of fine gold, and his countenance is as Lebanon excellent as the cedars. And his mouth is so sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. And this is my best friend. Amen, O oh, daughters of Jerusalem. Don't delay. Don't put other things. Don't let the distractions of this world keep you. He's calling us to wake in the middle of the night. He's calling us for a season of rest. And I want to read the, the, uh, the letter that the Lord had me give for the ladies this year. And again, I pray over this letter and, and uh, determine to, hallelujah, give something that you, God, would have me give, not just some words, but something that's going to, to make a difference in your life. So I'm just going to read this to you that weren't able to make us make it this year. And I pray and thank God for every one of you that sowed seed into the, into the come away this year. I speak a thousand fold over back into your life as my one friend that prayed for me for four weeks ahead and wasn't able to attend, but she has the reward. She has reward of that come away. And, it's, and let me read this to you. Dear precious sisters, I welcome you to come away in 2022. For many of you, this may be your first time since we started in 2004. The Lord has beckoned us to come away and make adjustments to the three areas of our life. I pray as you seek his face over this weekend that our faithful shepherd who dwells among the lilies will take you into a season of rest from toiling and spinning. As we find the maid in the Song of Solomon, she sees herself in chapter one as dark, abused by family, and that she only grows from hard places. But the king does not accept her estimation of herself, but he instead declares her to be a lily among the thorns around her. In the book of Ruth, even Naomi wanted to change her name to bitter due to many disappointments. Through the seasons, we need to continue to move forward in faith, knowing that our Redeemer lives. Our kinsman Redeemer is the one that sees your virtuous acts of bravery and is faithful to cover and restore, but he will never be number two in your life. As we approach the altar tonight, this was what I wrote, tonight as we approach the altar or as you approach the altar today, allow the one who has purchased you with his own blood, bring that cleansing to your life. Reflect on this precious blood so valuable that it has clothed us with glory from on high. Allow him time to give you a new heart and remove the hardness that has kept him out as well. Identify the thorns of anxiety and lust for other things that are stealing your attention away from pure devotion to God. Examine the precious seed sown and declare again the harvest is now. Identify those seeds of service to him and obedience to his word 
or faithfulness. It could be faithfulness in a marriage, faithfulness in prayer, purity. God says, let us plead together that you may be justified. In other words, remind him of seeds of obedience. He promises you will doubtless return, bringing your sheaves with you. Speak over the seeds that you have that you have, that have not yet produced and are instead are thorns of briars. Speak to them and they will produce. Revel in the glory of the Lord that covers you, no matter what thorns surround you. And recognize that we are hid in Christ and more than a conqueror in every situation. Receive this fresh empowerment of glory tonight. So lilies, I say, rejoice. Go forward. He has predestined, called, justified, and glorified you. If God is for us, who can be against us? When Jesus was that crown of thorns was laid upon Jesus' head, in this realm, a crown of thorns was put upon his head, but his blood shed on those thorns that were on his head made those thorns become changed. They were rearranged. They were changed, those thorns. And now Jesus is the one that wears the crown. He has many crowns. He's the crown. He is the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. I want you to know that no matter what you do, whether whatever situation that you might have been um, struggling in, the Lord, when you go through, the Lord, Lord returns that victory and gives you a crown, amen, for that, that situation that you went through. The Bible says we want to crown him the Lord of all, his triumph over the grave. Amen? Yes, vis wounds visible for those he came to save. He came to save you and I. And when we look to him, the Spirit of the Lord says, when you cry out to Zion, when you cry out to him, he's able to change that situation and to make it different and to make it as if it didn't happen. Amen? If you cry out just to cry out, Nothing's going to happen. But you, when you cry out to Zion, he promises that he will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy. Amen. Let me just read what he promises. I'm, again, I'm not making this up. This is, these are promises that I stood on, but you can have it too. He wants you to know that these promises are sure to the seed. And that's you and I, to the seed. It says, he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. Hallelujah to the meek. He has sent me to bind up broken hearts and set at liberty those that are captive and open to open the prison doors for those that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn He's the comforter of everyone that mourns. But he appoints to them that mourn to Zion a different thing. He appoints those that mourn in Zion, and he gives them an exchange. Beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning. <laughs> Hallelujah. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, so that they may be called the trees of righteousness and the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen? And not only that, but that you would build up the old wastes and raise up former desolations and repair waste cities and the desolation of many generations. Amen? He has many promises as you allow this, as you cry out to Zion, and many exchanges. A lot of those exchanges, no one's ever going to see. No one's going to see what you did in secret. 
But God is a rewarder. Those things that are done in secret, he'll bring to light. And so when you cry out in Zion by yourself, God receives it. I remember when, oh, Jesus, that day that I turned on the TV and that woman was preaching right to me. Hallelujah. And I repented at my bed that day. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, I just have to have something more. And I repent of those things that I've done. And that woman on that show that day, she's just rattled off all these different things. And I just went through those different things. I said, Lord, forgive me for this. Forgive me for that. And I tell you, there wasn't anybody there. But Jesus was there, any person. Your altar today could be your bed. Bedroom could be your rug. It could be in your car. But I know that when you truly repent, when you truly cry out to God, cry out to Zion, he'll turn it around. Hallelujah. And you may have looked at me at that time in my life because I had a job. I had a good job. I had a company car. I had a condominium. I had things. I wasn't desolate. I wasn't on the street when I cried out to something. But when I cried out to Zion, he answered me. I repented. And he did a work. And he saved me. Amen. And from that day, and you might not have seen a significant change in my life. People might not have said, boy, she really was changing. But I knew that I was different. And, and God started to put different people in my path. And he always had people in my path. And for this new season that God has for you, he is bringing encounters. He is bringing people to provoke you higher in your life. Hallelujah. Because he desires for you to come up with him. And he's going to bring some that have gone up some higher places that you've been in. Hallelujah. So that he can provoke you that you can say, yes, I can go there too. Hallelujah. Amen. And I appreciate it so much, the ministry and the, and the anointing upon Sister Yolanda this weekend. Because she's gone into some, some realms. Hallelujah. I've gone into some realms in the Holy Ghost and seen God do some things. And it's so wonderful to hear a testimony of a different dimension that God, that she went to Jesus for all walks of faith, all actions of faith. Amen. But he called her to walk on a high place. Amen. And when she goes through that situation, she's in a higher place with Jesus. She knows how to take other people up there with herself, where she went. So they can, the sound barrier was broken here. See? Then when, they, when that sound barrier got broken, when that airplane went through the through the sound barrier, now they knew that the sound barrier was broken. Hallelujah. They knew the sound barrier was broken, so now everybody else started going in it. And there are people in this hour, hallelujah, that are getting things, they're going into new lit. They've set, the limits have been, have shut, they've gone past the limits and pass into some situate, some revelation, and some things God has shown them. Hallelujah. And he wants you to go up there too. But you have to go. He's going to show you. It's through faith. It's through. But, but he knocks at the door in the middle of the night. When he sees to you, Robert, that, that you obey and that you go. Because there's a fresh anointing on the doorpost of that calling to come away with him. That it's you and him and nobody else. Thank you, Jesus. We just give you the glory. Father, for this fresh door that you called us to come out and go away with you, Lord. And we give you the glory for it. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You said, come away. You said, and to the bride you say, come. And to, what does it say? I'm going to, quote, I want to read it right now. Don't want to mess it, mess it up here. Hallelujah. 
and the Spirit. Verse 20, Revelation 22. Hallelujah. 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Hallelujah. And let him that hears say, Come. And let him that is a thirsting come. And whosoever will, let him take of these waters of life freely. Amen. He which testifies of these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come. Amen. He's coming soon. Hallelujah. I thank you for watching and those that will watch and listen later. I, sorry that you weren't with us, but I know we're all about his father, our Father's business. I thank you for those that were able to make it. And just every part of, of Mavis, the, the, the pictures of your beautiful wings that God gave you and in excess. Oh, just beautiful. Every part was so, so by the Lord. I thank you, everybody. God bless you. Have a Jesus-filled day, and we'll be with you. I'm going to be back with you a little bit. We're going to talk about Galatians. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you, and you are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.